This is Special Prosecutor Larry Clayman. I'm the only lawyer ever to obtain a court ruling that a president of the United States committed a crime. For truth, for competition. As a young lawyer, I helped break up AT&T. That's why you have all your cell phones today. For sovereignty, for the republic. I'm the guy who, at Judicial Watch, which I founded, uncovered the Chinagate scandal. Millions of dollars going to the Clinton campaign, corrupting our political system. For the privacy of citizens. And I'm the only guy to have enjoined the National Security Agency from mass surveillance on hundreds of millions of Americans. Tearing it up. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. Bringing it back. We're going to take this country apart and put it back together again in the way envisioned by our founding fathers. It's not just talk. We're not just regurgitating news stories. Larry Klayman, special prosecutor, is making the news. And now, here's Larry. Welcome to this week's edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. Perhaps the most important event in terms of the whole dynamics of our political and legal system The future of this country does not depend on who is president of the United States. And we're going to explain that throughout this show. But let's just back up a little bit. I got to back up because the president's legal team in many ways let him down yet again. We know that he got dragged through a very long Russian collusion investigation and then an impeachment. They weren't aggressive. They should have been aggressive as I was with Dr. Jerome Corsi suing Mueller, taking other legal actions, filing criminal complaints. But they let him get dragged down. And, of course, he was weakened in that process. Now we face a situation where there's massive fraud. There's no doubt there's massive fraud throughout this voting system and our political and legal system. But the question is, will the courts step in and rectify the fraud? And I'm going to tell you, as I say in my book, it takes a revolution. It's not This is what happened in the last four years. It's not just this is the horror story that we've had to live through, vote for Donald Trump. You can see those books are now obsolete. I mean, the president right now is on the verge of losing the presidency as a practical matter. I'm going to explain why. But my book is Clayman's Manifesto, in effect. It is a manifesto of the American people, of our founding fathers, which I adopt and put into the practical terms of today's world. It is dedicated to Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson, perhaps our greatest founding father. I believe he was our greatest founding father. A philosopher, a lawyer, a politician, a farmer. You name it. These people were smart. Not just Jefferson, but the rest of the founding fathers. And Jefferson was against the creation of a federal judiciary. He opposed that in the Constitution. While he was in Paris as our ambassador to the French court, they sent him a copy of the proposed Constitution. He said, I don't like Article 3. And they asked him why. And he said, because it gives rise to federal judges who will be unelected and unaccountable to the people of the new nation of the United States. And you're planning to give them life tenure. Well, you know what? They didn't get life tenure, as you'll see in my book, It Takes a Revolution. Forget the scandal industry, which you can get at Amazon.com. They gave them to be able to serve for good behavior, which means that they can be removed. But the Congress has never had the will to do that. Only eight judges in 244 years have been removed, eight out of tens of thousands. In fact, one of the last ones, Alice e. Hastings, was removed for bribery, African-American from Miami, He then ran for Congress claiming that this was a conspiracy against African-Americans, that he was impeached for taking bribes, and he won. In fact, he won during this last election. He's still there. So this is what I'm talking about, is that these federal judges and and are our worst enemy, and you cannot expect them to overturn what's going to be a phony election result. We've got to get real right now. That's the way it's going to be. And that's the way it's always going to be. They're going to save their own skins at the expense of the American people. And that is why in the chapter of It Takes a Revolution, Forget the Scandal Industry, I say, figuratively speaking, because I don't advocate violence or, or anything else other than peaceful and legal means to create and to recreate a new nation, a new revolution, and a new way of living in this country under the vision of our founding fathers, that is why I say that we're in this fix right now, and that if there has to be a revolution, I say figuratively, the first of the guillotine should be the federal judges. 
Can I go through that? But then look, let's look at the deep state in the executive branch, a deep state of intelligence agencies, of other agencies, IRS, Homeland Security, the FBI, you name it, who have done their best to take the president out in the last four years. They are more powerful than any president of the United States, and they're totally corrupt. And I go through in the book exactly how that's happened over time. I mean, for instance, most people believe the CIA had President John F. Kennedy hit because they thought he was weak on communism and he, he gave in, in effect, to Fidel Castro. Castros are still there. That was part of the deal to get the missiles out of Cuba. We had to pull our missiles out of Turkey, and many people think the CIA had him hit. Let's go forward. I'm just naming a few examples. Lyndon Johnson, Bay of Pigs, lied about an attack by the North Vietnamese to get us embroiled in a war that cost us 55,000 lives, hundreds of thousands maimed. Then you can go forward to the Nixon years, go forward to Watergate, and you can go on and on and on and on. Well, and I'll give you the most recent example, Iraq, the deep state got us enmeshed in the Iraq war with millions of people affected by that. Thousands of Americans killed it. That war still goes on. But this is why the executive branch is as corrupt as the judiciary. But the judiciary won't do anything about it because they protect themselves first. They don't represent the American people. And then, of course, you have the court jesters, the clowns, the fools, and the criminals in Congress stuffing money into their pockets right and left from special interest groups and not representing the American people. They continue to get fat and happy in Washington, D.C., which has never seen a recession in the modern age. And what you have is a total breakdown. I repeat, total breakdown of our legal and political system. And there's no recourse because the federal judges who get there primarily on campaign contributions is just one example. A colleague of Sheldon Whitehouse, that senator from Rhode Island, that mafia-infested state, paid a half a million dollars to get his judgeship. I have judges that were appointed by President Trump on cases that have paid a lot of money to get their judgeships, or other people have paid it for them. They are bought and paid for, the federal judiciary. So we've got to get real right now, and that's why you got to turn off Fox News, forget the scandal industry. I mean, they're going to try to gin up in prime time with Hannity and the others that there's a ray of hope here because that's the way they get viewers, that's the way advertising dollars flow, and that's the way you jingle change. Now, I support the president. I have always supported the president. We have, in effect, been his law firm for four years. Now, I haven't had any contact with him, primarily because of people like Roger Stone, who's defamed me, and I'm sure that he has. But the president, let's give him credit for getting the ball rolling. But at this point in time, now we have to do it for ourselves. We have to plan the next second American revolution peacefully and legally. Because here's what's going to happen. First of all, a so-called President Biden and the evil witch Kamala Harris are going to reverse every executive order and policy of President Trump, whether that's with regard to dealing with Iran or dealing with Israel. You can bet that the embassy is going to be yanked out of Jerusalem and put back in Tel Aviv. The uh, acquiescence of the United States to the annexation of the Golan Heights will be revoked. They will start to favor again the Palestinians, as they did in the Obama-Biden administration with the Muslim-in-chief, Obama, you know, exercising his disdain for the state of Israel and Jews in general. And you can see what's going to happen there. The wall that, frankly, has not been built to any great extent with regard to immigration, that'll be stopped or torn down totally. Immigration will come in again in mass from terrorist states in the Middle East. And of course, last but not least, there will not be any prosecutions and never were going to be in any way with regard to blowhard Bill Attorney General of Comey, Clapper, Brennan, the McCabe's, the Lovebirds, Bruce Orr, the Bidens, the Clintons, and of course, the Obamas. You can forget about that. And just as one example, unless the president pardons General Flynn, he's back in the hot seat with Emmett Sullivan because a new Justice Department under Biden will retract the requested dismissal of the indictment against Flynn.
These are the kinds of things that are going to happen. Now, various Republican pundits, establishment pundits and Fox News say, well, because the Democrat, because the, the uh, Republicans will retain control of the Senate, uh, it won't be that bad. No, it's, it's going to be bad. And let me tell you why it's going to be bad, because, number one, we don't know that the Republicans are going to retain control. There are now two seats that are up for grabs again. It's now 48-48 in the Senate, and there's two independents, Bernie Sanders and I forget the name of the other independent, which will vote for the Democrats. So they have an edge. Plus, they've got a vice president, Kamala Harris, that can break any ties. Now, granted, the filibuster may not go away if the Republicans contain, retain at least marginal control by having more senators, even though they won't have the voting edge of the Senate, and, and Mitch McConnell will remain the senator uh, that is leading uh, the Senate, the, the majority leader. But that's only going to slow down legislation and nothing else. The deep state will continue on. The judiciary will continue to be compromised and corrupt, and the country will be left defenseless. And last but not least, you can expect, I know I said last but not least a few minutes ago, that the deep state executive branch agencies, the IRS, the FBI, the intelligence agencies, there will be a purge of, of conservatives, libertarians, and people in faith. They want us dead. They want us done. They want to have complete control over this country. So you can expect an inquisition to occur. Get ready for that. Now, Larry Klayman, they know, don't mess with me, okay, because I'll push back. But they're going to miss, mess with you, and they're going to mess with you and your family. And I might add also the hordes of leftists that have been destroying neighborhoods and looting, rioting, maiming, and killing, they'll be back in the streets in short order. So this is what's going to happen, and this is why it takes a revolution. Forget the scandal industry. I'll be right back with my very good friend and patriot, Jason Goodman of Crowdsource the Truth. we got a little bit more to say, and then I want Jason to weigh in here. This is my take. It's now time for the people. The time of Donald Trump has passed. Dangerous. I don't care. Use the court and the law. Lethal. This is bad. Special prosecutor. Very bad. Larry Clayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. We owe President Trump a debt of gratitude. Uh, he was there for four years, and he did a lot of good things. But now it's up to us, as I've said. And it's up to people like Jason Goodman to write the score when it comes to the media. It's clear that Fox News is done. Stick a knife into them, they're done. They even tried to throw the president under the bus during the latter stages of the election, predicting that Arizona would win when it was hardly clear. And you could see the smirks of the new face of Fox News, Chris Wallace, the entire time. Happier than can be. And the president will probably go on and start his own network. Let's hope he does. He could even run for president again in four years, although I don't think that's going to happen, you know, given his age and that kind of thing, although he is quite well fit. But again, the answer is not with who was in the White House. It was John Adams who said, it doesn't matter how many times you change your rulers or forms of government. Without ethics, morality, and religion, there will not be lasting liberty. We clearly have little of that in this country today. So I'm going to bring in Jason. I want to get his take on what's going on. He may differ with me in some respects, but, you know, I'll tell you something. As sad as, as we are that the president effectively, because the courts will not step in, they will not, they're corrupt and compromised, that the president is no longer going to be president. The reality is this may be God's will to get conservatives, libertarians, people of faith, and others who believe in the vision of our founding fathers to rise up and to do it for themselves with things like citizens' grand juries that Jason and I did last fall with regard to Mueller. He was indicted. We will try him. We will convict him. We will sentence him. And in my book, It Takes a Revolution, which you can get at Amazon.com, I even explain that there's a history in our system of jurisprudence coming from ancient England of citizens' arrests, which we will attempt peacefully and legally. So I turn it over to Jason to give me your take on what's going on, particularly with regard to the media, which you are a member, and 
you know, the fact that they will try to prop up all of the radical leftist, communist, socialist, anti-Semitic, anti-Christian, uh, pro-Muslim, pro-radicals of every race, color, and creed, and religion, and they will do their work. And at the same time, the left will start to fight within itself, just like the white Russians and the red Russians did after the Bolshevik Revolution, and just like happened in Iran when the Ayatollahs took over with the Mujahideen. There's going to be bloodletting even on the left. The country will go into a spiral, and it's up for we people who believe in the vision of our founding fathers, who believe in what Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death, to preserve the vision and creation of our founding fathers. It's now up to us. It's no longer President Trump. Jason, take it away. Well, you know, thanks, Larry. And, you know, thanks for having me on the show. You and I have known each other now for several years. And for people who are listening who might disagree with what you're saying, I sympathize with that. And the thing is, sometimes, Larry, when you come on Crowdsource the Truth, people say, oh, this guy's being too negative. But it's not about being negative or positive. I am right now still hopeful that the legal efforts being undertaken by President Trump's legal team will succeed. I see evidence of fraud in terms of the voting, the times these votes came in, et cetera. But the thing is, Larry, your analysis, while the uninitiated might see it as a negative outlook, it's born out of wisdom. And in the time that we've known each other, there are few prognostications that you've made that have been, you know, incorrect or totally off base. And that's not to say that you're always right, but you have actually a very educated and experienced view of these things. And unfortunately, you may be correct. Uh, I am holding out hope, as I said, that the legal battles will prevail. It's amazing to me that uh, the American people accept this line from the media. They always like to punctuate anything they say about the president, like President Trump claims fraud without evidence. There's a lot of evidence, but we've heard them scream about Russian interference in 2016 without evidence, and they never mention that. Well, Jason, here's the thing. Okay, I hope you're right. I also happened to predict what was going to happen in this election. Okay, nobody believed me, you know. And I said, you know, I've just got a really bad feeling of what's going to happen. And they said, oh, no, it's going to be a blowout for Trump. It's going to be a blowout. You know, I support the president. I've been there for him. And he hasn't been there for me, but I've been there for him, thanks to Roger Stone and people that he hangs around like that. But you got to face reality at some point here. And what I'm saying is, is that we, the people, need to move on. We need to do it for ourselves. And, you know, I wish the president well, and I thank him for what he did. But the courts are not going to step in. I'll be right back with Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. And now, four words that make corrupt politicians make wee-wee in their little pants. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this president. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. Special Prosecutor Larry Klayman. Be the one who makes our country great again. Go to FreedomWatchUSA.org and donate. I'm back with Jason Goodman. Jason, I want to continue your thinking here because I do appreciate the point-counterpoint. Uh, but, you know, I was correct, and you're right. You know, I predicted there would be no prosecutions of Comey, of McCabe, of Brennan, Clapper, the Lovebird, Struck and Page, of Bruce Orr, of the Clintons, of the Obamas, or the Bidens. And we know, of course, that Bullhard Bill Barr, equally as bad as Jeff Sessions, screwed around for several years, brought no prosecutions, and now it's over because now Biden and Kamala Harris control the Justice Department, and there's going to be bloodletting. Let me say that again, bloodletting. Conservatives, people of faith, and others, the so-called deplorables of Hillary Clinton, will now be under siege. There will be a purge. The intelligence agencies will be used to try to eliminate us, and so they will have a free reign for what they think will be the end of time. The devil has infested the Democrat Party and has infested 
are institutions of government. Literally, I believe in the devil, frankly. Okay, he's out there. Okay, maybe it's a she. I don't know, but the, the reality here is, and needs to be faced right now. And once you get Biden declared as president of the United States, which will happen if it hasn't happened already, well, you know, it will happen shortly. You're not going to be able to reverse it. There's no judge that's going to put his his skin on the line, his prestige on the line, his power on the line for what he would perceive to be a losing cause. And this is the problem. Yes, there's been massive fraud. You know, there's always been massive fraud. And this is the way, unfortunately, our system works. But it's gotten worse because the Democratic Party is so corrupt and they control most of these major cities. And I blame the president's legal team. Why didn't they file lawsuits well before the election for declaratory judgments? Why did they wait until it was a fait accompli? Why did they allow the president to be dragged along, and I'm including Giuliani too, you know, for all those years with the Russian collusion investigation without pushing back on Mueller? Why did they allow that to continue? Why did the president not take charge of his own department? He's the head of the Department of Justice. He could have told them to open investigations. There's nothing wrong with that. And he did nothing wrong, you know, in the call to the Ukraine either. We now know that he's right about that. And I'll tell you something, as corrupt as Biden is, as corrupt as Kamala Harris is, as corrupt as the Bidens were with Ukraine, Russia, and China in selling the office of the, of the vice presidency for billions of dollars, this goes on every day in Washington, D.C., even at a smaller level. You know, we were talking about it before the show. I like General Mike Flynn, and he's been a patriot. But he wasn't real smart in entering into a consulting agreement with the government of Turkey while he was the national security advisor or shortly around that period of President Trump. Who runs Turkey? A radical Islamist, Erdogan. Who has national security information in his head? General Flynn. Why did they want to hire him for half a million dollars? They wanted to hire him because they wanted that information. And this is the problem that we have. The government is so endemically corrupt. And that's why in my book, it takes a revolution. Forget the scandal industry. I'm saying, get up off the couch, put the popcorn and Coke and and wine down and get to work. And we need to do what our founding fathers did, because, you know, we have no justice system and we have a corrupt government at every angle. And the, the judges will not step in. So I hope that people will read that book. Because the judiciary is the biggest problem. They're the most corrupt branch of government, as Jefferson predicted. He said they would become despots because they're unelected, unaccountable to the people. That, again, probably every 20 years, we would have to shed the blood of patriots yet again. And then he added, what's a few thousand dead to preserve the tree of liberty? Now, he didn't want to see violence, but he was predicting what was going to happen. I don't want to see violence. And I'm predicting that this is likely to happen as well if things go on the way they are. So it's up for us now, me, the American people, to rise up and try to avoid that. Because what we've got, what we're going to have in the White House now are vile, dishonest people. Biden won't last. Maybe he lasts a couple months or a year or whatever. He's going to die with regard to his health or whatever. Maybe they'll kill him. I don't know. So they can take over the radical left. Maybe he won't wake up one day. And then you've got Kamala Harris and all those radical leftists, all those radical racists on the left that hate whites and hate everybody else, hate people of faith, hate uh, people who believe in conservative principles or founding fathers. They will seek to take control. So that's where we are. OK, and uh, you can have wishful thinking. I hope what you say comes to pass, Jason. I pray it. I pray that the president would win. But God has other plans right now. I think God wants us to do it for ourselves. That's my opinion. Take it away. Well, you know, the one area where I might differ slightly, Larry, is that at the top of that, you said that uh, William Barr is no better or worse than Jeff Sessions. I think William Barr is quite a bit worse because Jeff Sessions couldn't be described as anything other than just feckless. He did easily nothing. But William Barr, I think when history looks back on Donald Trump's presidency, irrespective of what happens in the next week, and I I do hope he succeeds legally, but I think that the selection of William Barr as the attorney general is going to have to be regarded as the fatal error 
in Donald Trump's presidency, because we all know that William Barr was the attorney general under George H.W. Bush. And what's happening in America right now is not the result of a crackhead having sex photos on his laptop or even accepting millions of dollars in bribes from China. Sure, that's part of it. But, you know, when we look at the generational corruption and we look back to some of the most horrendous deeds ever done by those people who've been elected in our names, Iran-Contra is a through line that survives to this day. Bill Clinton was involved in that scandal in his role as the governor of Arkansas, allowing drugs to come into Mena Airport. We know what happened to Barry Seal. We know that the Bush family was deeply involved in that. And, you know, if Barr were not there, if we had a legitimate attorney general who would actually prosecute these criminals, this thread that Donald Trump has been pulling on would unravel the entire sweater. And there's been really a massive apparatus in place to prevent him from doing that. People who scoff at the term deep state, I mean, that's that's really a simplification. It's almost like a Twitterization of this concept of a vast network of bureaucrats that range from elected officials to appointed people and employees and contractors to the government, all of these people who don't care. They're so short-sighted. They don't care about the future of America. They don't care, Larry, about your health, my health, our well-being, our prosperity. All they want is the immediate satisfaction of their own greed, whether that's money or crack or power or whatever they're trying to satisfy. We may be at the point where America's chips are being cashed in, and uh, it's a disconcerting prospect, Larry. Well, it is. And, you know, what we have right now, Jason, you actually touched on something there as with regard to Barr. How did Barr get to be attorney general? He yeah. got to be attorney general because the Republican establishment promoted him to Trump. They they sold him a bill of goods, the president, on this guy. He's always yeah. been establishment. He's not a person who's going to stick his neck out too far. I give him credit for stopping, however late, the Mueller investigation, the witch hunt. But beyond that, he was protecting his flanks. The Democrats threatened him with impeachment, with criminal contempt, and he said, I'm not going to stick my neck out for either the president of the United States or the president or the people of the United States. And that's why he's done nothing. And that the scam of an investigation by John Durham, oh, we can't release it now for political reasons until after the election. I mean, OK, now we know what's going to happen. It goes into the trash, right? There's nothing yeah. there to begin with. Well, whatever was there <laughs> goes into the trash and nothing happens. And the same thing happened with the judges, and I talk about this in my book, It Takes a Revolution, Forget the Scandal Industry. I've been in front of eight of them, eight Trump judges. They're either dishonest or worthless. Okay, they have no courage. They won't take any action. And go get my book, and you'll see why. I lay it right out. Because they were recommended and promoted by establishment Republican interests like the Federalist Society run by Leonard Leo, who greased everything to get them their jobs, and they get there. And they got to pay back the people that put him in power. The president just rubber stamped. The names were put on his desk, approved. Okay, he didn't know who he was approving. And this is the establishment, the Republican establishment, which will do nothing to risk its own standing, wealth, and power for the American people. And yes, you have Amy Comey Barrett on the Supreme Court right now. You know what? I could care less. Uh, you know, maybe she'll be good along with Alito and Thomas, but the rest of the conservatives up there, so-called conservatives, particularly the one who was a closet conservative for a long time in more ways than one, by the way, John Roberts, he's an actual closet person generally. We all know that. And that may be why he's been blackmailed all these years. I mean, nobody cares whether you're gay anymore. OK, but apparently he does. He's from that generation. That may be one reason how they blackmailed him, because it's mutual assured destruction in this country. Everybody has dirt on everybody else in Washington, D.C. And I've said, you know what? Let's clean out Philadelphia of the rat's nest of the left that exists there. Let's put our capital back there. Let's start our own government again, as we did in 1776. Maybe we'll nominate President Trump to be our president. And, you know, let's 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 move on. You know, read the Declaration of Independence when and I'm paraphrasing, you know, when the bonds of the government are separated from the people, the people have a God given right to abolish and form a new form of government. 
with God's divine grace. I'm just paraphrasing, okay? So before you read my book, go read the Declaration of Independence and see where we are today. This is where we are because the Democrats are pure evil, pure evil, and the Republicans are in it for themselves, by and large. And the Supreme Court and all these federal judges, you can gauge with almost exact certainty how they're going to vote based upon put them in, putting who put them in power. I, I talk about a judge, Judge Randolph Moss, and another judge, Dabney Friedrich, Moss appointed by Obama, Friedrich appointed by Trump on the D.C. District Court right now. That's the lower court. Both came from Wilmer Hale. Coincidence? The law firm of Robert Mueller and Jeannie Ree, who was on the witch hunt. You know, with Mueller. And they've now got bookends. So Randolph Moss donates $38,000 to Democrats to get his judgeship. And Wilmer Hale bundles a whole lot more money to get both him on the bench and Dabney Friedrich, a Trump judge. They now have bookends on the bench. They now own a lot of the federal bench in Washington, D.C. Great for getting clients, great for winning cases. And, and for anybody that says that. Judges go on the bench, like Roberts says, which is a total lie to the American people, that they're neutral, that they just mete out justice. No, they pay back the people that got them on the bench. Jason? It's, uh, it's troubling, Larry. I mean, I agree with you. This federal judiciary, we've heard lots of stories of you know, corruption and action. It's just not, uh, it's not protecting the people. I, uh, I'm at a bit of a loss. I mean, you know— it, you were talking about the media and the bias. I, I think we need to go one step beyond that. Bias is one thing, but, you know, compliance with a fraud is another. I mean, you know, we've we've heard a ton about Fox News and others calling states. And, you know, this starts the drumbeat of this public perception where, you know, if they tell everybody, oh, there's no evidence of fraud. Uh, these judges are part of everybody, and they see it on the news. There's no evidence. It's it's amazing how they just they've got a loud megaphone, and even when we have an incident where there is substantial evidence, like this Hunter Biden laptop, the megaphone is shouting, "Ignore that, and pay attention to this." And uh, it's amazing how they're able to sway the public. I really think that um, as individuals, people need to take their own responsibility to be skeptical about anything and everything that they hear. And uh, really try to find the right answers. Don't just immediately believe what's announced on the news because you like Fox or you like CNN or you like MSNBC. So it's a difficult situation, Larry. I think we've got a lot of uh, – I don't know what the way out is. Well, I don't want to you know, sound like I'm being overly promotional with my book, It Takes a Revolution, but I, people got to read it because it, it has a shelf life way into the future. It's not like the other books. <laughs> Jason, hang in for the verdict section. I'm going to wrap it up, and then I'll get your thought, and then I'll uh, conclude this uh, sad story. Be right back. a trial lawyer he sliced him and diced him people used to ask me larry what caused you to start judicial watch and now freedom watch given the powerful forces in this country that put you at risk in a meat packing plant i'm the son of meat packers in philadelphia pennsylvania i know how to slice and dice a very special prosecutor larry clayman if you'd like to support freedom watch and this radio show go to freedomwatchusa.org fellow patriots People who believe in the vision and concept of our founding fathers, ironically, in Philadelphia, on July 4th, 1776, my birthplace, the birthplace of liberty, a place I was once proud of, not proud of it anymore. You can see what's going on in Philadelphia. It's one of the most corrupt cities in the country. Uh, it may be in the top 1%. You've got a mayor, Jim Kenney, uh, a disgusting individual who, along with the district attorney, Larry Krasner, uh, a Soros disciple and a police chief, Danielle Outlaw, who comes from Portland of all places. She's a police chief because she's African American, and and this was cover for the radical leftists, the white radical leftists. There, I might add, uh, they're do doing their best along with the Attorney General of Pennsylvania Shapiro and also the Governor Wolf 
uh, to destroy any concept of fairness in this election. But they're powerful. They're very powerful. And that is why we're fighting back. I mean, we have lawsuits at Freedom Watch against the mayor, against the DA, and against the police chiefs for firing Philadelphia cops. And that's something else. Go to americasheriff.org and see. We have a group with Sheriff Joe Arpaio now, my partner, and Demetri Penny, a brave African-American policeman who was attacked in Dallas with that massacre to protect the police. The bottom line is this. We need to act ourselves right now. We can't dwell on what's happened in this election. And I'm talking as, a, as much as of the inevitability of what's going to happen, because we got to wake up. You know, remember the movie Moonstruck with, with Cher when she slapped Nicolas Cage and said, snap out of it when he said he was in love with her? Well, you know what? We were in love with President Trump, too, okay? And we still are. But now we got to do it for ourselves. We're on our own. And that's why the book is so important. It takes a revolution. Forget the scandal. And I want you to read it. I doubt I'm going to make much of anything on this. Because, but I, I had to do it. It was inside me. And I, I had to lay it all out in one place. I write a weekly column at worldnetdaily.com. You can see it tonight. It, it's going to be embedded to this radio show when I get it out. But I had to get it out. It was. It's in me. And this is where we are. And no one else will say it. Jason will say it. Crowdsource the truth, Jason. Tell us about that. Because, you know, all these years... You know, I thank God for you that I can come on and I can talk. And they persecuted you, the social media companies and others, Twitter and Facebook and others. And, you know, you're a patriot. And that's the we all need to be patriots and we need to be fearless right now. Fearless. We need to risk everything to save this country because it's hanging by a threat. Jason, yeah, final well, thoughts. You're, you're absolutely right, Larry. And I mean, you've hit on a very important point in that, you know, most people are barely engaged with presidential politics, let alone Congress, and certainly not district attorneys and those types of positions. And, you know, while we were all, and myself as well, I'm guilty of this. I didn't really become as, gay, as engaged as I am now until 2015 or 16. And people like George Soros have been strategically chipping away at this, installing people like district attorneys who have the ability to decide who does and doesn't get prosecuted. And that was a really sneaky thing for them to do, because it's just not a, an, a, an elected position that the average person oh. pays too much attention. You know, to. Jason, the, the, the devil is evil, but the devil is very smart. He's not as smart as God. And I'm a Christian and I'm a Jew. OK, so. Uh, I mean, you may not agree with me on this one, but he's not as smart as his son either. OK, and we will prevail. We will prevail. And but we have to now rise up. OK, Donald Trump served his purpose and he did a lot of good things. Now we need to take it from here. It's up to us, just like our founding fathers did. And people like you are who we need out there to push this whole thing forward. And we can't dwell on the past. We have to think about the present and the future. The leftist hordes will be in the streets shortly, and we also need to defend ourselves with our Second Amendment rights. So I want to thank you for everything you've done. You're going to be part of this new revolution, the Second American Revolution, and I hope the American people will be too. So please go out and first read the Declaration of Independence, and then read my book, It Takes a Revolution, Forget the Scandal Industry, and let's return this nation to the vision of our founding fathers. Let's return it to that faithful city on a hill that Ronald Reagan talked about and which you can find in the prophecy of the old book, the Old Testament of Isaiah. God bless you. God bless your family. Stay safe. Remember, God is with us. I'll be back tomorrow, rather next week, with our podcast and our weekly radio show, Special Prosecutor with Larry Kleeman. Thank you for listening to me.